Yo, Holmes, what's up, man? Senior Scotty Grove. <laughs> Dr. Groovy. GroovyMusicLessons.com, man. Uh, <laughs> coming to you uh, with another new guitar today. Um, I did the smart thing today, and well, about a week ago, and ordered a guitar that I knew would be good, because they just always are, and if they're not exactly the way you want them, a very little bit of work will uh, get them exactly where you want. And that's what happened to me today. I got exactly what I wanted, um, and I'll show you as we go uh, what I did to change it to exactly what I needed it to be, and again, without spending a lot of money. Okay, so um, after spending lots of money on many guitars over many years, um, I've been going back and getting guitars that I actually will use at gigs and I don't have to worry about them getting stolen or whatever you know it's always going to suck if it does but these will always provide you with great sound great playability once you put them there and which I had to do and very easy to do so everybody should know how to you know work on a guitar these days especially with YouTube here it makes it all very easy to learn how to do these things what I got today was this Washburn which is my favorite company as far as whenever anybody asks me, man, what do I get for a beginner guitar or an intermediate guitar or a pro guitar, but I don't want to spend a lot of money, what is the best bang for the buck acoustic or acoustic electric? And that will be the name every time, even though this one's made in China or whatever. Um, doesn't matter. Um, people are people. People will make quality to the specifications that the company dictates. It's still just people, human beings, building guitars. They will build them horrible. If you tell them, hey, you're only getting paid fourteen ninety five per guitar to build it, so make it crappy, but we'll sell a ton of them because they're cheap. Or they'll say, hey, let's make a great guitar because you have the capability and let's make a bunch of them and let's make them cheap and I'm gonna we're gonna order since we're Washburn and we're big uh, we're gonna go ahead and order you know fifty thousand right out of the gate so give us a great price and we'll do it so they did and this one's a nylon string which I've been looking for or classical whatever you want to call it and they had all these in just your typical acoustic color you know that spruce top color but I found this one in a tobacco burst, which I thought was really nice. And I haven't been able to find another one or another picture since. Even on Washburn's website, they don't show this color. They only show natural. Okay, so you've got a thin body, because I don't plan on playing this for anything other than gigs. If I do play it here at the house, it will be kind of nice that it will... Um, be very quiet because it is quiet because it's a thin body what inch inch and a half thick He's playing Jimmy Page. <laughs> anyway, so little bitty sound hold right there, which is cool, um, I think. Um, so there's not going to be a lot of room for feedback with this thing on stage. Uh, Washburn back in the 80s and 90s made a lot of Telecaster-shaped solid body acoustic electric guitars and so forth. But I really, really like this guitar. Uh, $299 delivered. That's no case or anything. But the... This body and this will fit in any electric generic case that has no, um, that's not form fitted for a Les Paul or a Strat, you know, it's just a generic that anything will fit in. This fits in the guitar case that I take most of my guitars to, all my Strats, the Paul Reed Smiths, everything fit in them, you know, except, oh God, everything fits in there. <laughs> um, so 
I didn't even need that because it's like I, I've got a bunch of spare cases. So two ninety nine delivered. Uh, you can get them anywhere. Um, but again, this finish, the tobacco burst is really cool. Um, again, I'm usually not a sunburst guy, but compared to the other one, the other one looked really, you know, kind of like the Martin, not even Martin made, but the uh, that little travel piece of crap. What do they call it? The fudge packer, backpacker. That old thing, it kind of looks like that color, you know, so it's not even a, a quality looking finish. But, I haven't got to see it in person. This looks a little different in person. I like it more in person than I did on eBay where I found it. And it said last one. And then there's a whole bunch again in natural on eBay. So, And you can find used ones for two fifty nine dollars at um, the places that... You know, the big box stores. But watch out when you're out there um, buying from like Musician's Friend or Music 1, 2, 3 or the um, things like that because those are all owned by Guitar Center and if they have one for two fifty nine, it will be a used one which has been returned and there's a reason those guitars are returned, okay? They don't fix them back up. You know, they just either put them on a sales floor as a demo at a Guitar Center or they sell them to you cheaper and let you figure out what's wrong with it. And I'll tell you what's wrong with them, you know, pretty much every time. Um, it'll be the same thing that was wrong with mine. And I knew it was going to come this way just because most acoustic electrics just show up that way, even the high-end ones, and you get to go fix them. Okay, so what did I have to go fix? First, let's give you the um, model number of this thing. EA, so acoustic electric. CT for uh, classical tar, <laughs> not good tar, classical tar, <laughs> uh, let's see, 42S, 42 Scott, I was 42 seven years ago, and for anybody who thinks I'm like really, really old, I'm not even 50 yet, folks, people think I am, I'm not, I just have, I just grow a gray beard, and I don't color my hair. Okay, so this was uh, the Classic Harvest series, Tobacco Burst again. Uh, the Florentine cutaway, which you'll see is just that real sharp cutaway right here where it comes to a point. So you'll see some guitars like, you know, Ted Nugent plays the Birdlands, but they make some Birdlands, you know, that are really rounded off or whatever. But, you know, that's what you call a Florentine when it comes to a point like that, which is cool too. So again, I just wanted it to do some um, Willie Nelson stuff on stage and make it sound more accurate than all these steel string acoustics I have everywhere. So it's just like, this is what I want to spend. I want to spend this $300 and that's it, but I know it's going to be great. And the electronics are always great. Uh, they usually use the B-band stuff and this one, the electronics in this one are great too. Uh, Washburn just gives you more. Um, I've got a few Washburns around here. I got my B Bender Forest Lee Washburn Acoustic Electric back there. That's going nowhere because it's great guitar. Um, uh, you got the s typical spruce top, um, mahogany back and sides. So that's the grain you're getting there. So that's mahogany back and sides. And again, just the Sitka spruce top, um, mahogany neck. It is rosewood on the front, even though it's a tight, tighter grained rosewood than you would normally see. So it's not ebony; it's just rosewood. There's only 19 frets. Okay, so take a good look. You can look into hoe. <laughs> now, here's an interesting thing which I really, really like is it has that on the back. You're like, what's that for, the battery? No. Um, that lets you get in to work on that jack. Because it's hard to get your hand inside of a hole this size <laughs> and try to get down there and work on that jack. And it lets you work on the pickup if you need to. It lets you do all kinds of things. There's, there's things under there, folks. So if you want to go in there and if you want to slap a piece of wood between here and the back and just chunk it in there, give it a little bit different type of sound, you can do that. Um, it won't affect it when it's plugged in, but it'll, you know, might create some stability. Um, but 
it plays great now. Did it when I got it? No. Um, I had to shave about a quarter inch off of the underside of the saddle. And here's what always happened. And then it was, you know, played perfectly. You know, just do, I just use a Dremel, which is right here. And I use the uh, little sandpaper wheel attachment. And I just go right along the bottom of it. And keep going, removing material to where I, you know, think it's going to need to be. Keep putting it on a flat surface when you're done to make sure that it's exactly flat to go back on top of the uh, piezo style pickup that's underneath there. And here's what happens that I said usually happens is that, and that's no big deal. A lot of companies, again, like Rain Song, they send just one great big huge blank. Um, bridge saddle and you are expected to do your own work because nobody likes their guitar set up the same and once you make an acoustic thing too low there's no going back so uh, rain song that does my carbon you know the carbon fiber guitar I have here um, they just do it that way they said here go make your own but here's the material to do it so yes I had to cut that down and now action is great um, here's 12th fret if anybody wants to look here it is on the low E side. You can see the double markers. Okay, so now it plays great. No problems at all. But what does happen is that there's always the infamous, like I said, the piezo type pickup that's underneath here that this touches. So again, get it flat so everything lays on here. But the pickup itself, usually, after you pull this out and do everything, before you put it back in, you make sure the pickup is right in the middle because it likes to move around but not on here it was adhered via something in there some kind of adhesive so it's not moving so I plugged it in just to check it out real quick before I did everything and you know it didn't quite tune it up but the high E string was like non-existent but everything else was picking up really well through the PA but the high E string wasn't so that I have done a million times and if you ever get this on your low E or high E sometimes it's both um, they just put the pickup in the wrong place and it's you know it's all over here and it wasn't quite enough over here to pick up that there's what I did just grab a 73 millimeter Tortex Jim Dunlop pick cut it off <laughs> and I ended up with a piece Dun -dun -dun -dun. he said piece Okay, about like, how can I even show you how small this is? I know it's not the first time I've said that in my life, but that is this big. So it's just big enough to fit in the slot for the bridge. And then you just take that and put it on top of the pickup and then push it all the way to the edge of the route that is there for your bridge. And that automatically extends the vibrations of whatever the nut or the uh, saddle is doing and it works every time you just put one underneath the low E put one underneath the high E every time you get a guitar and you know if you have a problem with it at all so if there is a problem uh, with uh, volume output being different you know on the high and low E string it's always one or the other or both every now and then you'll luck into a perfect guitar that you don't have to mess with but quite often this is a problem but that is a solution that you don't have to pay anybody to do just lay it in there lay it flat and it actually extends the vibration contact points out to as far as the cutaway is in there so further than the pickup on both sides and it sounds amazing it sounds just like it should so that's all I did slip that in there so that goes in the trash that material I'll use later for some more stuff to cut it up okay now the only other thing as far as me having to get it ready to play was classical guitars nylon string and yes uh, for those of you out there who don't want to tie this crap on these strings uh, yeah there are plenty of string companies that make strings nylon strings or these sets with the ball ends on them and then you just run them through the bottom and over top of the bridge just like it is and just run it through that hole and it's got a ball on the end of it like regular strings so that's what I use but this is just in today so I'm still just messing with it and blah 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 so a uh, great guitar it's full-sized 
It's um, great for you players who are electric players already and it's just a little bit wider at the nut so it's not like a typical classical that it is you know like two inches wide it's a little bit wider but not so it's in between okay so it thins that down for you a little bit so you don't have a huge adjustment to make from going to from a regular acoustic to a classical or from electric to a classical so I really like that about it and plus they never come with okay you plug it in there and that becomes your strap button of course but nylon guitars typically never come with a second strap button because they're usually tied right up here you know you tie it around with these or you throw the other end of the thing around the, one of your tuning pegs which are cool kind of a tortoisey looking thing but they're cooler than they probably look on there as you all know I have the shittiest camera in the biz but um, I ended up you gotta put the uh, I put a strap button there and then put it in the right place which is on the Florentine side or the cutaway side but right about there so not on the back of the neck at all okay so all your high-end acoustics will have the strap button there. Why? Because you never, your hand never touches that. It'll never touch the strap coming out. So when you're playing, you can feel where you will and where you won't. Because if I was to put it where you won't play, you know, where your hand's going to come in contact. If you put it back here, like on most guitars do, um, you're going to hit it with your hand. You're going to hit your strap right there. You're going to bang into it um, because you're trying to reach up here to get to, like on a Les Paul, like you just run out of room right here and then all of a sudden you get this huge chunk of massive mess and then you have to reach around all this to play it. It's just a mess, <laughs> which is the same way, but you don't want a strap in the way as well and a strap button digging at you. Okay, so everything here is gold, so the gold will wear off, I'm sure, so I just put a gold strap button where it belongs. It balances perfectly there. Most people just don't think of where to put the strap button, you know. All the big companies, they put them just wherever it's convenient. They don't actually make sure it balances. So, <laughs> make sure your strap button is going to balance. Hold it by wherever and just see if it goes neck heavy on your nut before you actually put the screw in there. Okay, the uh, preamp on this thing, a tuner, which is a must for me. Um, that's, that's a deal breaker or maker for me. All acoustic instruments have to have just like this one didn't have it um you could you could lately but it has to have act you know the electronics in there the eq the tuner the whole nine yards has to be there or i just refuse to get it if but that was so cool i had to get it and then just do it myself okay but this one comes with nice stuff on it oddly enough okay here's the battery so it just goes right here I haven't even popped it, probably 9 volt, yep. And a quality 9 volt it is. There you go, just can't beat those. So, just drops right back in and away we go. Um, here's your, and it's different than it says on the website, as always. It says you have a 4 band EQ, plus volume and a tuner. No, you have 3 band. Lows, mids, and highs, and volume. Okay, then you got a button for the tuner. The tuner actually does not tell you the note. It tells you the string. Kind of like if you go by strings, it says first string, second string, third string, fourth. It, that's what it does. It shows up one through six. So tuner's on. Um, like here's my high E. So it's showing up as number one being flat. I'm just going to sit here and tune it. Okay, there it is. If I was to hit the next string. And I really don't want to do it this way because it's not in playing position. Because your neck will go all over the place if you're doing it like that. So you want to tune it like you're playing it. So I'll do that. I just want to show you that it does. Here's low E. So string 6. String 5. String 4. String 3. So that's how it shows it in sharps and flats. Okay. 
So that's how that all works. There's your binding, which is kind of groovy looking. It's got some uh, grain in it, some maple. Uh, if we can, or maple looking. I'm always standing in the light. There's never any light in my, my dungeon, you know that. Okay. And that is it. Um, to say exactly what I expected, and I did exactly what I expected I would have to do to it. And that's it. Okay. So, nothing to do now but plug it up. I don't know why nobody hardly ever does. I didn't used to do this either, though, so I can't bitch too much. But, um, as far as plugging the guitar in, and letting you hear it, a lot of people just say, okay, yeah, I can plug it in. Um, but then again, I feel like singing, too, so you can shut this off right now if you don't want to hear me caterwaller. Yes, that's a word that we used back when I was growing up in Indiana and Kentucky. Spent the uh, summers when I was on summer vacation when I was really young. This was up until I was nine years old. Until mommy and daddy got their divorce and our trailer that we vacationed in in Kentucky on the Ohio River blew into the river because of the tornado. I heard they just had some more of that weather in just recently. Okay, so I'm gonna find the cord that it came with. <laughs> And those are always special things, aren't they? Those. So it'll be broke by tomorrow. So I'll use that. But it does come with that. comes in a cardboard box. And you also get the truss rod Allen wrench with it. And that is it. That's all you need. Again, they do offer a case if you want one. But like I said, I have other cases. So no big deal. $2.99 delivered from eBay or from any of the retailers online they are they are all the same price unless they are used or returns okay and normally people would return a guitar when you could not hear the high e string or the low e so now everything well i got that up high and my ever-present reverb that i love let's shut that reverb off down on the actual instrument. <laughs> he said instrument. He always does. Okay.
C. I can't remember it. There it is. There should be a C way up there. Okay. That's called uh, Somewhere in My Broken Heart. Um, who did that song? I'd have to go look for it. It might have been Billy Dean or something, but yeah, country tune. I'm going to pause and hit my tuner again because I hear it. It was the B string was the culprit. Because as, if you don't know, nylon strings, you can stretch them all you want for this or ukuleles or whatever, but they still just inherently, you cannot get the stretch out like you can every other kind of string in the world where you can do it in a matter of a couple minutes. Your strings actually do take a good week to break in. I mean to just to where you can tune it so it will not be out of tune in that amount of time, 5 or 10, 15 minutes. Um, it's just the way they are. And yes it does kill your guitar when you use the tuner. Most people won't tell you that either. I hate it when they leave everything out. But anyway, so that's the guitar. Um, I just honestly couldn't be happier. The price is right. And it comes with everything I need or want out of a classical type guitar. And again, I said I just wanted to make a couple Willie Nelson songs. This might show up if we're doing like a week at a casino or something. I might pull this thing out. Uh, five or six times the entire week, you know. Um, but it's there, and that's all I wanted for. So I didn't want to spend a lot of money, and but I knew Washburn was the way to go. Um, just always has been. Um, I trust them with everything. It's, you know, the electric stuff. You know, it can go either way. I've had some good, some bad. Um, it's just a matter of. You know, if you get a lemon or not, then you always have the choice to return it, if you buy smart. Uh, but make sure you can return your stuff. Um, but the acoustic stuff by Washburn, I mean, just even my banjo, my five string over there, it's from the 70s, it's Washburn. Um, it is, it's honestly, that's where I tell everybody to go. I don't tell them to get anything else, or a baby tailor, or anything crazy or a low-end Martin or nothing, no, I would always tell people to get Washburn over everything else. And usually a, I am the last person to say that a brand name actually matters because so many guitars, like this one, um, this isn't made in America. There is, yeah, the USA Washburn plant, but this is made over in China with many other guitars that have different names on them. But Washburn sees to it that the quality is there. You know, for whatever reason, all companies, again, may have problems with their little pickup, not quite picking up the two outer strings or one or two. But again, I showed you the fix for that. It's very easy um, and it works every time flawlessly. Every string is perfect now and always is whenever I do that little pick trick. Um, it's just the greatest little thing I devised on my own. There was no internet when I was little and I had to make guitars sound good, so yes, one of my little stupid inventions. A piece of pick and it just worked good. <laughs> Actually, I just wanted to raise my action one day on one of my guitars that I had cut the bridge too low on and then when I did and I put that little shim of a pick under there then all of a sudden my high E string started working and it never did before. Then I realized, realized why. It's like then every guitar from then on, I just did that to it whenever one of the strings didn't work. And it's always one of the outside ones and it carries it every time. So you just file it underneath just a little bit more than you would, you know, just under the high E string than you would the others just so you could have room for that shim to continue across. Okay, I, like I said, I wanted, I wanted to sing me a Willie Nelson song because that's why I bought the guitar. Um, Angel Flying Too Close to the Ground is my choice for today. Um, hey, and here's the guitar with my, re my infamous reverb, folks, because I like it. 
Um, again, let's go live. Because, I, I mean, don't that just, some of you just don't like it, I know that, but I, I'm just a product of my generation, man. Uh, back when everybody owned a PVPA system and a PV amplifier and everything had reverb cranked way up on it, especially if you're in a country band. It's just... picking with uh, reverb. see me or not probably not um, I'm just gonna sit down <laughs> get me a microphone two, 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 two. and so that's the review of the guitar I really really do love it and expect for there to be those little things that could be wrong but they're not wrong it just needs set up so um, just learn to set up your guitar I've showed you what to expect and again that's a great thing it's just access hole to everything in the back in case a wire comes off or whatever and I don't see getting rid of this guitar for any reason there's no reason to get rid of it, it feels great and um, the nut is actually a um, even though it looks plastic, it's not bone, it's not plastic, it's a, um, oh, like tusk, you know, so it's a lubricating thing, so you don't have to worry about that either, you know, they thought it all out, and, you know, you can get cheap stuff good these days. It used to be that good stuff ain't cheap and cheap stuff ain't good, but that has changed over the years. You can get a lot of good things really cheap these days, just, um, got to know what they are. Certain people make amazing things for cheap. Again, like Washburn with their acoustic instruments. Okay, so for whatever it's worth, Washburn, thank you for always doing right by me on the acoustic stuff. This here's in the key of A in case anybody would like to stick your finger in your nose and pick along with me. <laughs> If you would not have fallen, then I would not have found you. Angel flying too close to the ground.
stuff like that on my own or whatever the rest of the band can go to the bathroom or they can join in I don't even know if they know any of these most of these old songs that I whip out they don't know how they go but they jump in how hard can they be what was that five chords maybe <laughs> you gotta love Willie man if, if you don't shame on you worship the man while he's still here he's got a little bit of time left um, one of the greatest in the world um, so, for Willie's sake, pick up a classical guitar. <laughs> Just something wrong with you if you don't like Willie. <laughs> so once again, Scott Grove, Dr. Groovy here, as happy with this guitar as any other guitar I've ever been happy with. And at the price point, way, way, way happier. <laughs> So good, good job Washburn, and good job uh, making it easy to set up. Um, nothing there that was hard for anybody to do at all, and I've pointed out anything that could possibly even be wrong with it when you get it. And again, nothing was wrong, it just needed a little tweaking. <laughs> so just a little bit of meth, and it was good to go. So, GroovyMusicLessons.com, head over there for all kinds of free lessons. And then there's those good old paid ones, too, if you want to throw the old man a nickel. Um, tap your feet. Oh, that's Credence. Down on the corner, out in the street, Willie and the poor boys are playing. That's Willie. Bring a nickel, tap your feet. If you ever wondered what the words are, those are the words. <laughs> I know you can't understand them. My wife is so proud of or just happy to actually know what the words were after about 40 years ago and singing the wrong things. I don't even know what it was she was singing, but um, <laughs> I don't know. Just me being me again rambling. You guys enjoy yourself. I'm going to go play with my Willie. Okay, bye. <laughs>